In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a destruct Photoshop action. So here I have my stock photo, and um, I'll put a link to this video, uh, sorry, to this photo down in the description. So if you want to follow along with this tutorial with this photo, just download that and yeah, follow along. So what we're going to be doing is essentially blowing off the roof of this house um, with this action. So the way the action works is that uh, you choose from um, five different directions, left, right, up, down, and middle. You firstly brush over your photo where you want to blow apart, and you play the action, and it creates uh, all these effects for us. So I'll just click through a few more examples that I have. So there's the right direction. That's another up direction. So you can see that you can actually turn off um, I keep everything layered with my actions, so you can just turn things off if you don't want them. So in this example, I've just turned off all those broken pieces, so it's just more of a cloudy effect. Alright, I'll close these down and start from the beginning. Alright, so firstly we need to make sure that your Photoshop file is set up correctly so you don't run into any errors and you're going to achieve the optimal results. So firstly look into the layer panel here, make sure your photo layer looks identical to this. So it must say background and have that lock symbol. If it doesn't, so I'll just demonstrate this. So if you open up your photo and it doesn't say background have a lock symbol, go to layer, new, background from layer, and it sets it as a background. So you only need to do that step if it doesn't look identical to that. All right, so still in the layer panel, go to the top right hand corner icon, go to panel options. Right down the bottom here, make sure add copy. Add copy to copied layers and groups is ticked. Click OK. Next, go to image, mode, make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. Uh, go to image size and just make sure you're using a large resolution photo. Uh, I recommend a range of 2000 to 4000 pixels for this action. Uh, it's just going to create a lot more detail on the effects uh, if you're using a high resolution photo. So steer clear of using photos you know, under 1000 pixels. The action will still work but you won't get uh, that real detailed look uh, in the effects. And um, use a uh, pixel per inch range of resolution of anywhere between 150 to 350. That will help achieve uh, even better results. So you can see I've set mine to 250 here. So uh, yeah, adjust that if it's very low. Okay, so that's that. Uh, now what we need to do is create a new layer. So go layer, new layer, and you must uh, call this layer brush, the uh, USH, it must be all lowercase, otherwise the action won't work. So, what we need to do now with the brush layer selected, we just brush over our photo where we want to um, explode or you know create all the effects. So, I'm just going to hit B on the keyboard and get the brush tool out. I'm using the square brackets there to adjust my brush size. See that? Uh, I'm just going to pick red, doesn't matter what colour, and I'm just going to start brushing over my photo here, all the parts that I want to um, blow up, um, you can use a soft or a hard brush, it doesn't, doesn't really matter, just avoid brushing very small areas, so, and with a thin brush, so don't, um, don't go over your photo and brush little lines like this. It's best to brush um, a large area of photo and you can always sort of hide um, or erase some of the effects after the action's finished. So uh, I'm just gonna brush a little bit more along here, just randomly. Okay, so that's now all ready to go. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is load up the actions panel. So I go to window, actions, it'll pop up here. Click on this icon, go to load actions, select destruct.atm. Here it is, pops up in here. 
twirl this open and there's your directions <coughs> excuse me so uh, all we need to do from here is select one of these directions and click play on the action uh, the action will take around two to three minutes to play back um, so you know just uh, click play and come back to Photoshop in a few minutes time if you want to check the progress of the action uh, and how long it's got to go just twirl open the action here and when it's playing back you'll see the scroll bar to the right it'll be going down like this so when it gets to the bottom there it's finished so uh, keep that in mind and before um, you run the action it's a good idea to always go to uh, edit purge and all that'll just clear out any history that's banked up um, and which can, can actually sometimes cause um, issues with actions so just make sure you purge your history um, before running the action okay so I'm gonna pick the up direction now I'm gonna just twirl this open so I can see the progress but um, it's gonna click play and like I said the action is gonna take a few minutes to play back uh, that'll depend on sort of the specs of your computer as well and how um, large your photo is so I'll just fast forward the video now and get to the result and talk about uh, what each layer does. Alright, the action's finished and you can see it has created all the effects for us. Uh, so what we'll do now, uh, we'll just close up this, close up the actions panel and look inside the layer panel here. So firstly, what you want to do is collapse all these folders. So a quick way to do that is just with the folder that's already selected, destruct, hold down Control alt or command option on a Mac and click on that arrow and that will just uh, collapse all the folders alright so I'll go from the top down talk about what each layer does and how it affects the design so this top one uh, I've just called reveal original photo and I've got in brackets brush mask so what this layer does if you select the layer mask and if you grab a white brush just make white your active color hit B uh, you can actually brush away the effects entirely. So if I start brushing, you can see that uh, it disappears. So you can really fine tune the appearance. You know, you know, so for example, say I don't want these parts down the bottom left hand corner. I can just use this mask here and brush them away. Um, you can you can use a softer brush. So at the moment, uh, it's only at, it's at 100% opacity. You know, I can turn that down to 50% and or maybe lower like 20% and just brush away just little sections you know you can focus on the edges so use this layer to fine tune you know if you're using this action on people and there's you know uh, broken up parts that have appeared over the over the person's face you can use this uh, layer mask here just to quickly erase it okay and if you want to bring it back grab a black brush I'll hit X to make that the active color and uh, just start brushing back in on the mask you can see out there okay uh, what I might do I might actually just fill that whole mask in black just to bring it back to the original state alright so going on down so these three layers in here um, I've just labeled them all with purple um, and these are just ones to uh, affect just like the brightness and contrast and color saturation of the effects so for example, if you double click on this one, overall saturation, you can use this saturation handle here to increase the saturation of the colors. Um, you can remove it, so uh, you have it black and white. So you can play around with that handle there. All right, so by default, I've just turned it up a little bit. Overall brightness, uh, if you double click on this one, you play around with these handles here, you can adjust um, the essentially like the contrast of all the effects just like that so by default without that that's what it looks like and um, I've just made sure that uh, when the action's finished that it's turned up the contrast a bit to enhance all the details so you can go in and play around with these handles okay I've also got this one here called overall contrast and I've got in brackets opacity so this is just another way to um, affect the contrast of the effects. So if you move your mouse over the word opacity here, click and drag to the right, that'll increase the contrast 
zero. I'm going to drag it to the left. So start off at zero and slowly start dragging to the right, and it will um, slowly start increasing the contrast and all the effects. So you might find that you know it looks really good with your photo with the contrast all the way up. So just by default it's at zero, so just keep that in mind. Soft cloud swirls. Um, now what you'll notice with the colouring of these layers, the, what, the way I've done it is I've grouped these three in yellow. So they're the ones uh, that you want to experiment with, you know, by just turning it on and off, the layer on and off, just to see how it affects the design. Okay, they're, they're quite similar, these three layers. Um, so you will find, you know, with, you know, you might use a photo and these bottom two um, don't suit it, so you just turn them off. Okay, so just remember that those three there in yellow, um, you want to experiment with, just quickly turn them on and off. And also check the opacity in the blend mode as well. So if I look up here, this one's set to overlay. Um, it's got an opacity of 100, so you can easily just adjust the opacity of these layers. Uh, you can set the blend mode uh, to soft light, so it's not as intense. Uh, you can go down and check other ones. This one's probably a bit too intense. Uh, vivid light. All depends on your photo, really. Okay, so that's that one. Uh, add soft glows. Inside this folder here, they're all turned off. But if you turn them on, they just add soft, subtle glows over the highlights of all the effects. So the area is basically in white. It'll just add just a little bit of glow. Uh, it just helps to add just a little bit more atmosphere, but it might not suit your photo. That's why, by default, I've turned it off all these layers, so you could go in and just turn them on one by one and see how it looks. Cloud set one, so if you look at this folder here and then right down the bottom at cloud set two, so they're quite identical, they're just um, different positions up the layer order. Okay, so we're going to select cloud set one here, um, so you can turn them both off to see how that's affecting the design, just like that. Um, if you want to make it more prominent, you can also hit Control J or Command J, duplicate the layer. So then the, stack, then the effects start stacking on top of each other. So it makes it that then when I just duplicate it, um, just give it a lot more density to the effects, much more intense. So what I find the best way to experiment with all these layers um, and to quickly experiment with how they affect your design is to simply just go down and turn them on and off. Okay, turn the folder on and off. See how it affects things. Um, you never know because I do that every time I, when I'm using this action, and you'd be surprised that you know sometimes you might have a whole chunk of these folders turned off and it looks a lot better. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's those two layers. There's a little um, layer style set to this layer here, uh, outer glow. If you double click on this, adjust this opacity handle here of color burn. And that will actually increase, um, well, you can see what it's doing there. So that's a that's one to play around with as well. That can sort of up the intensity um, of all the effects. Okay, close that. Now these three folders in blue are essentially all the broken up fragments you can see there. Um, so if you turn these all off, all you're left with is smoke essentially, or clouds. Um, so that's a, a, an effect you can opt to use as well. We don't have to use the fragments. Okay. Um, this one down the bottom here, dust particles. If you look, if I just zoom in a bit here, if you see around the edges, or oh, you can see over the entire design, those tiny little particles, that's this folder here, dust particles. See that? So if you want a lot more, just duplicate the folder over and over and over and move those layers around. If I go inside here, um, there's the dust layer there. You can move that around so you can see that there. So you can take it, you can create a ton of those little dots if you want. I'm just gonna zoom out. Oops, zoom in a bit. Okay, uh, I'll turn these two back on. Now, fragment set one, actually I'll turn these two off, Let's go one by one here. Fragment set one, if you go inside here, so these are all the broken up parts, all on separate layers, so you've got complete control over the positioning of them, you can duplicate them, 
um, rotate them. You can um, do some strange things like add, you know, I could double click on this layer and go color overlay. Whoops, wrong one. Color overlay, and you can start, you know, color picking different colors around the design. Um, I don't know, just experiment with this way. That's how you can experiment with sort of adjusting the appearance of each one of those fragments. Another little trick here, if you, um, this is, CS, this is for CS6 and above, if you double click on this folder, you can actually apply a layer style to all the layers within that folder. So if I go like, you know, drop shadow, you'll see it's added a drop shadow to all those, um, all those fragments. So, I mean, you can go like pattern overlay, and I've got a, a rock texture here, I can scale that right down. I could set that to like overlay, like that. So each one of those fragments now actually has a texture on top of it, which is pretty cool. Uh, you know, bevel and emboss to give it a bit of depth. You can play around with those settings. So just remember that option's there, but I'm pretty sure it's for CS6 and above. Now another thing to keep in mind with this layer, uh, sorry with this folder, is the mask, the way I've set up this mask. So I'm just gonna hit Alt, or option on the Mac and click on it and go inside. Okay, there it is. So everywhere white is where I've restricted these um, fragments to appear. Everywhere in black, they won't appear. So I'll head back on out here. So if I want to like, duplicate one of these um, layers, I'll duplicate it there. And if I start moving it around, you'll notice that it's, it's pretty much restricted to that um, main center area through the middle here because if I go back into the mask here that's that big white patch that's essentially the main area it's restricted to so if you want to remove the restrictions you know duplicate that layer control J and move it outside of the folder like that so now I can move some of these parts you know off to the side here so it looks like it's blown out a bit more um, and all these fragments are different sizes, so just, you know, um, check out duplicating them. Uh, I'll move, so that's a, quite a small one, so I can move that out to the side. Uh, play around with blurring it a little bit. So I can go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and you know, just adjust these. It just helps with the, um, the overall effect, so like the realism of it. So that's, um, that's that. Okay, so moving on down, and if you want to um, hide this mask temporarily, just hold down shift and click on it. So that way you can see when I do that, there's a lot more um, fragments appearing off to the side here. But just to help with the, um, the default look of the effect, I've created that mask to make it appear in only random areas on the outside of that main center area. So fragment set two, like that. So that appears, um, these fragments basically stay around uh, the area that you brushed, around there, but they kind of, they um, just move out a little bit to the left and right, so you can see that there, but a lot of parts sort of stick to the main area. And fragment set one um, is pretty much just everywhere, so it covers more of this um, throughout the, the bulk of the effect there. So they work hand in hand together to build the overall effect. And then dust particles just adds that fine little bit of detail to you know, help with the realism of the effect. All right, so going down, um, black smoke, turn this one on and off. So you can see that there, that's basically sits behind all these clouds. Um, the opacity is up pretty high. Uh, so if you play the action and you notice that a bulk of all the effects is quite dark, just check this layer here, black smoke, turn it on and off. You know, you might prefer it with it off, might look cool with it on. Um, other things to play around with, you can move it up the layer stack, I'll move it up there. So you can see it's sort of cut off, um, it's hidden most of those fragments in the darker area. So now it's, it's created a pretty cool effect there. Um, or, you know, you can move it up above and adjust the opacity. You know, if I just hit five on the keyboard, it'll adjust the opacity of that layer to 
That looks pretty cool. Did it look better than how it was down here? Probably not. So I'm going to turn this back up to about 90%. And don't forget to play around with the, like, the opacity of these folders, the fragments. So I'll just select it. I'll hit 5 on the keyboard again. And I've just adjusted all those fragments to 50%. Play around with the blend mode as well with the folder. Get some um, cool results that way as well. Okay, so yeah, I've briefly talked about this layer here. Um, this one, add cloud contrast. That sort of just boosts the, um, the density of all the effects. So you want to turn that on and off. So again, um, the opacity of this one's quite low. Always, when you're like clicking through these layers, just check the opacity. And then, so it's at 40, so I'm just gonna crank this up to 100. What's it look like? Looks pretty cool, but don't want it at 100%, I think. So I'm just gonna move that down a bit. That'll do. Soft photo backing. Uh, by default, this is on. So, might not shot too well this photo. Oh, it does a little bit. Um, so if you turn both of these off, around the area that you brush, you will essentially lose all the definition of the original photo. But if I turn these both on, you see how a lot more of the detail just came back in. So if you're thinking that you, you've just played the action and you've lost a lot of detail of the original photo or you want to bring it back, turn these two on and you'll start to see it um, come through all the effects. So the one that's on by default is only soft. Um, it's very subtle, but that might just be enough to help uh, your design along. This one's strong, so it's gonna make it much more visible, okay? This one here, shadowing. If you look at the layer opacity of this, it's at 50%. I'll bring this to zero, 100. So what it does, it's essentially um, a gradient. It goes from black to transparent. It sits behind all the effects. So um, if you want to add, a, if you want to increase the detail, if you want things to look a lot more obvious, um, increase the opacity of this layer. And you can see that the, like the fragments appear, uh, come on much stronger. So it basically adds like a, um, a black wall behind all the effects. And um, yeah, just play around with the opacity of it. So that's at zero. But by default, I think it was on 50%. So that's always a good one to play around with. Um, boost cloud intensity. It's another one where it just adds some subtle changes to all the clouds. And cloud set two, I'll turn it on and off. So this one um, more appears to the out on the outside of the design there. So you can see that just helps with the tapering off of the clouds. Um, so yeah, you can play with those three layers, you can you know duplicate them, uh, do what you want there. So that's essentially how to use the action. It's very simple to use. Um, and you know play around with duplicating layers to add more detail. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really as simple as it gets. Uh, now, I didn't include any, usually with my other actions, I include some color options, but because of the playback time, um, I didn't, so, but what I do have uh, is something called Photo Master, and uh, so what I might do is I'll merge this entire design onto one layer, so I hold down Control, Shift, Alt, E, or Command, Shift, Option, E on a Mac, and what that's done is just merge the entire design onto one layer here. So now I can delete this folder. So now my design is on one layer. So what I can do now, uh, like I said, I've got this um, set of actions called Photo Master. And when you load it up, it creates, it has two folders, contrast and looks. So generally with um, my designs, I like to just play around with the looks folder. So uh, I'll just delete this, I'll just flatten the design. Uh, and the way these work is that you just click on them and you click play, and they apply just a color preset to it. And um, the way it works, it creates 
Let's scroll down here. It creates two layers. It creates a color layer and a luminosity layer. So you know you can turn off. Uh, you can turn on just color. So that way it only overlays the color on top of the original photo. And the default opacity of each one of the layers here is at 50%. So you can turn it up to 100%, zero. No, so and luminosity is just like brightness and contrast. You see that there? And they work hand in hand, the two together, just to build up the effect. So um, you know, I'll play that again, or I can play, you know, play this one here. See, just like that. And the effects actually stack as well. So you know, if I turn the opacity of these down to 29%, and I can click another one, click play. And you can see that it's kept the original one, so it just keeps stacking, and you can like you can move them up and down the layer order. You know, I can turn these ones up to 100%, zero. So it's add a little bit like that. So it's really simple and fun to use, and I included a lot of different um, actions here. So that each one are quite different. Some are really intense. Some are really subtle. Um, but you can always control like the luminosity um, and the color and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's that's really it. That's how I like to use this action. Um, and yeah, if you have troubles with it, just shoot me an email. Um, yeah, if not, have fun using it. Thanks.